Hi everyone, this video shows some advanced points on classes. It has three main parts. Firstly, how to share a state between instances of a class and its subclasses. Secondly, how to enable classes to have their own variables. Thirdly, how to initialize classes. First up, how to share a state between instances. Here, we have a class with several instances. To share a state, these instances require a common object. In Java, we use an instance variable that takes the keyword static. The value of a static variable is the same for all instances. In Faro, we use class variables. This should be a familiar expression that allows us to create classes. Here, we create the color class, which is a subclass of object. First, we list its instance variables, then take a look at the line below. It lists the class variables of the color class. Color class has at least two variables, color registry and component mask. A class variable's values are shared between all instances of the class and subclasses. These variables are accessible from both instance and class methods. They start with a capital letter. Let's go back to our example. Here we have our color class, which is an instance of the meta class color class. The color class defines two standard variables. RGB and alpha. These instance variables are private, meaning that they're only accessible using color class methods. It also defines color registry, which is underlined and uses capitals. This indicates that this variable is shared. It's a class variable that is accessible by the methods of the color class and those of the class color class. Here are some examples of uses of this variable. In one instance method, that of private blue in the color class, we access the class variable using its name. Likewise, if we want to give this variable a value, we use a colon equals sign as with any variable. We can do this on the instance or class side. Very often, the values of these class variables can be read within instance methods and are written within class methods. That is what occurs most frequently. It's not obligatory. Now let's look at instance variables of classes. It's not the same thing. A class is an object like everything else. Like all objects, a class can have instances. The meta class describes the class and lists the instance variables that can only be accessed by the sole instance, its class. To define an instance variable on the class side, we click on the class button in the code browser. That gives us the expression here. So now I'm browsing the R package set class. The meta class of this class defines a variable named cache packages. These variables can only be accessed from class methods, and they always start with a lowercase letter. Here is an example. The variable cache packages is defined in the meta class R package set class. This means that the R package set class, which is an instance of the meta class, has a value associated with this variable. Similarly, all instances of the subclasses of the R package set class have a specific value for that variable, which is a different value. There's no sharing here. Each instance of the R package set class or its subclasses has its own value for this variable. 
class variables and instance variables on the class side are different things. We'll explain this using the singleton design pattern, whose purpose is to ensure that a class has only one instance. One solution for executing this pattern is to store within a variable the instance that is freely accessible and disable creation of a new instance. That's what we'll do here with web server. Here, we use an instance variable on the class side. Its name takes lowercase. This variable is defined in the definition of the meta class. Now we disable execution of the new method. No messages can be sent to web server class to create new instances. It's imperative to go via unique instance, which either returns the variable's value if it's not nil and has content, or else it adds something to the variable using super new. It creates a new instance of web server class and stores it in the unique instance variable. The fact that we use class instance variables leads to the following result. Each subclass of the web server class will have its own value for unique instance. So, if web server has three subclasses, the unique instance variable will have a total of four values. One for web server and for each subclass. If we now use a class variable, we edit the class on the instance side and we add unique instance using a capital U. Again, we disallow sending new messages and implement unique instance. The only difference is that we use a capital U. As a result of choosing a class variable, the class hierarchy has only one singleton. If web server has three subclasses, these three subclasses and web server share the same singleton. Thus, we have one instance shared by all. Now for class initialization. We can have variables shared between a class and its instances. But at some point, we must give them a value. We do this when we initialize the class. Objects are initialized when the initialized message is sent. Likewise, we can send the initialize message to a class. We decide how to initialize variables using the initialize method code. If we want to initialize the color class, we send the initialize message to it. Typically, when a class is loaded in the system by the version control tool, the initialize message is sent to all classes. This is automatic. There's no need to send the message manually to all classes loaded. But if we implement a class, if we create a new class using the initialize method, we must send the message manually. Here's an example in the color class. We can see we're on the meta class side. Here, we initialize several class variables or instance variables on the class side. There are both types of variable here. In the initialize methods, we never use super initialize on the class side. When we add an initialize method on the instance side, we systematically call super initialize to initialize all instance variables of a newly created object. But for classes, since classes and superclasses exist when the initialize message is sent, we don't call superinitialize in the initialize method on the class side to avoid reinitializing classes. Here are the takeaways. We use class variables to share a state. Classes are objects that can have their own variables. So we use instance variables on the class side. To initialize a class, we send it an initialize message and apply the initialize method on the class side.